In this session, we will talk about configuring SAP HANA 1 database on Amazon Web Services. This is Hassan Mir from 02ProTraining.com. We have created a virtual machine where SAP HANA 1 database is running on Linux operating system. And now we are ready to connect to the Linux environment. Before we can do that, we need to do some initial setup. And this is what this session is all about. Here we will do all the required setup before we can log in as root and fire up the database. Log in to aws.amazon.com and start up the instance that we have created earlier. I have explained the method in earlier videos. Once the state is running, select the instance and go into actions and choose connect. You will see this screen giving you two options, either to connect using a standalone SSH client or using a Java SSH client from the browser. Keep the second option as selected. We will be connecting to the Linux virtual machine using the root user, which is the most powerful user. Once you're logged in as root, you can change user to any other user. You can create users, you can change passwords, etc. Keep in mind, we also talked about that when you make a connection to a virtual machine, you do not use password as such. You make connection using the private key that you downloaded as a PAM file, a file with extension PEM. So it's time to enter the location of the PAM file. My private key file is located in the downloads folder, and this is the name of the file. So location with the name is what we want to put here. I want to save the key location so that I don't have to re-enter it every time. So I selected this checkbox. Now I will click on launch SSH client button. You may not get the same messages that I'm getting here because I have Chrome and I have maybe out of date version of Java on my machine. So I'm going to click on run this time. Now I will see a few messages and I want to click on yes on those messages. Do you want to add this host to your set of known hosts? I'm going to click on yes. Also you might see two messages about creation of a directory on your computer. You may want to say yes to both those messages. I'm not getting those messages because it's the second time I'm running this uh, connection and I have already clicked yes on those messages. Okay. So you will see this screen here you have attempted to log in but system is saying you have not done some initial setup to do the initial setup you must go to this URL and that's why we created the access key and secret key in the previous session because in order to go to this URL you need the keys okay so double click on this URL and go to edit and choose copy now it's time to open up this URL in the browser I'm gonna click on this browser which is already opened and I'm going to open a new tab using control T and I will paste the URL that I copied and hit enter. You will see the security message. You may want to click proceed anyway because we know it's safe. Next, this is the screen that you will see. In the previous session, you created your access key and secret key, so it's time to put them here. You might want to go back to the previous video to see how to create those keys if you have not noted them down. So as soon as I'm going to paste my access key and secret key, system is going to validate them. I'll see this message. Keys are validated and I will see the license agreement at the bottom. I'm going to click on I accept. Step 1 was to enter the access key and secret key. Step 2 was to read the agreement and accept it. Step 3 is to set passwords. So SAP HANA 1 database is running on a Linux operating system. And there is a user on Linux operating system called HDBADM, HANA Database Administrator. And this is a user that owns the HANA database 
on the Linux environment and you will be connecting through this user to start up the database. You need to set up the password for this user. You enter the password here and you confirm it on the second field. So I entered the password and confirmed it here. So green meaning confirmation OK. So if I enter something else, it becomes red, meaning it is not matching with the first one. OK. Now, about the second set of fields here. The first set of fields were about the operating system user that owns the database software. And the second set of fields are for the database user. So just like operating system, where you can have different users, database could have different users too. You can connect as one user or the other, objects created by one user may not be visible to the other user and so on. So this is how you manage your work. And the most powerful user on the database is a system user. So here you're going to set the password for the system user. Make sure you read the full set of instructions at the bottom on how to create the system password and what not is acceptable and what is acceptable. So I'm going to just enter the password here. green meaning system is okay with it. Step 3 is completed. Now step 4 is about the ports. Now SAP HANA database is running on the Linux server and external connections would be made to this server. For example from Windows desktop you might want to make a connection using SAP HANA Studio client software. Necessary ports have to be opened for that to work. So if I take my mouse to which port, you can see port 30015 has to be opened for JDBC connection to the database and HANA Studio will be using two ports, 50013 and 50014. And for the HTTP request through the browser, port 8000 has to be opened. So when we created the SAP HANA 1 instance, when we created this virtual machine, a default security group was created as well and the security group dictates which ports are opened. You can connect one security group to multiple instances but in our case we only have one instance so one security group that was created with the instance is by default attached to the instance. Now if you keep this option as open then what will happen is all these necessary ports will be opened in that security group which is required if you want to make connections to this machine from external machines like for example Windows machine making connection to the server. I'm going to keep this option as checked so let me go back to the first tab and let me close this window connect to an instance window that we opened and let me go back if I scroll down I will see security groups under network and security section if I click on that, so you can see we have two security groups. One existed since the beginning called default and the other one was created when we created the SAP HANA 1 instance. So if I click on the security group SAP HANA 1, on the bottom side you're going to see two tabs, details and inbound. If I click on inbound, you can see we have three ports already opened. So once I complete my SAP HANA 1 setup through the second tab, you will see more ports here opened under the same security group because that is the security group that is attached to the SAP HANA 1 instance. Now I'm ready to click on Setup HANA 1 button here. The screen kind of becomes blank. So I'm going to go to the first tab and let's go back to my instances under instances section and select SAP HANA 1 instance, go to actions and connect. I'm going to click on launch FFH client button. The path and the file name is already there for the private key. I'm going to click on run this time. Now as you can see this time I'm able to log in as the root user to HANA server.
I'm not seeing the same message again that I saw first time around that I need to go and do the setup on that particular URL so I can do the listing LS and I can see the listing of the uh, folder where I'm landed after logging in.